Today's video is going to look at answering the question of how do we measure arc length and curvature. And we'll talk about curvature a little more when we get to it. But first, we're going to address the question of arc length for our vectored valued functions. And we're going to build this based on what we know from parametric curves. When we did parametric curves, we said arc length s is equal to the integral from a to b, where a and b were the edges of the curve, of the square root of x of t prime squared plus y prime of t squared dt. Well, similarly, If the vectored valued function r of t is equal to the component form f of t, g of t, h of t, then we have arc length is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of the first component's derivative squared plus the second component's derivative squared, plus the third component's derivative squared dt. And really, actually, finding the square root of all the components squared, we've seen that formula before. This is the formula for the magnitude of the vector. So instead, we can simplify our arc length formula to the integral from a to b of the magnitude of the derivative of the vector. And that becomes our formula for arc length. We take the derivative of the vector, we find its magnitude, and then we integrate it over its range. So let's do an example using this new formula. Let's say r of t, the vector valued function, is equal to 2t squared plus 1, comma 2t squared minus 1, comma t cubed. And we're going to find the arc length as time goes from 0 to 3. Well, first we need to find the derivative of our vectored valued function, which is going to be 4t comma 4t comma 3t squared. Next, the formula says we need to know the magnitude of the derivative of the vector valued function. And magnitude, we know, is the square root of the square of its components, 16t squared plus 16t squared plus 9t to the fourth, which simplifies to the square root of 32t squared plus 9t to the fourth. And actually, if we factor out a t squared, we get the square root of t squared times 32 plus 9t squared. And we can take the square root of the t squared to get our total magnitude is t times the square root of 32 plus 9t squared. Now we're ready to go to our formula, which says that the arc length is equal to the integral. We're going from 0 to 3 of the magnitude of the derivative 
of our vectored valued function, which we just found out was t times the square root of 32 plus 9t squared dt. We can take this integral quite quickly using u substitution, where u is 32 plus 9t squared. That makes du equal to 18t dt. So we'll multiply by 18 inside and 1 over 18 outside to get 1 over 18 times the integral. Plugging 0 and 3 into the u equals equation, we get 32 plus 0. And plugging the 3 in, 3 squared is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. 81 plus 32 is 113. The 18t dt becomes our du, and the square root becomes u to the 1 half, which we know is u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds with the 1 over 18 on the outside integrated from 32 to 113. 2 over 18 is going to reduce to 9, so we're going to have 1 over 27 times and I don't think this is going to simplify, so we'll leave it as 113 to the 3 halves minus 32 to the 3 halves. And that's an ugly decimal, so we'll call that good for the arc length of our vectored valued function. So using our formula, arc length is simply the, the integral of the magnitude of the derivative of the original vectored valued function. Really, we've done arc length before when we worked with parametric curves. So we're going to move to the next topic, which is curvature. And curvature is an important concept to us as we look at a curve. Curvature measures how sharply a smooth curve turns. If it's got a real sharp, tight curve, then you'll get a larger curvature. If it's a nearly flat, wide curve, you're going to get a much smaller curvature. Curvature measures how sharply the curve turns. Similar to slope or the derivative, measuring how fast the curve changes. Curvature measures how sharply the curve turns. And there's a couple formulas for curvature depending on the context that we're working in. We use, it looks like a K. It's kind of a cursive K for our curvature symbol. Curvature is equal to the magnitude of the unit tangent vector derivative divided by the magnitude of the regular vector's derivative. This function works best in 2D. So if we have a two-dimensional vector, we'll find the unit tangent vector and the magnitude of its derivative divide by the magnitude of the derivative of the vector-valued function. However, if we're in three dimensions, there's a quicker formula that can help us because we can use the cross product in three dimensions. In three dimensions, we'll take the derivative of the vector valued function and we'll cross it with the second derivative of the vector valued function, find its magnitude, and divide by the magnitude of the derivative raised to the third power. That formula is going to be best when we're working in three-dimensional vector space. Now, this can be simplified using functions to show that this is the absolute value of the second derivative of y divided by 1 plus the first derivative of y squared raised to the 3 halves power. 
And this function, this equation, is the one we'll use best with y as a function of x. So if we just have a function y equals, we'll use the last equation. If we have a two-dimensional vectored valued function, we'll use the first equation. If we have a three-dimensional vectored valued function, we'll use that center equation. So let's take an example where we use each of these equations to measure the curvature or how sharply the graph curves. These three equations are going to be really key to this section. So let's highlight them as we go into our first example. Let's say we have the function r of t is equal to 5 cosine of t i plus 5 sine of t j. Since we're just working with i and j, we have a vectored valued function in the plane in two dimensions. So we're going to use that first equation the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the vector valued function. Probably easier just to start finding all the pieces and then dividing at the end. So first, the derivative of the vector valued function, r of t, is negative 5 sine of t i plus 5 cosine of t j. Well, for the denominator, we need to know the magnitude of that. So the magnitude of the derivative of the vector valued function is the square root of the component squared, which is 25 sine squared of t plus 25 cosine squared of t, which is really nice because if we factor out the 25, we get the square root of 25 times sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t. And we know sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, so this is just going to be the square root of 25, or 5, which means it should be really easy to find the unit tangent vector. We know the unit tangent vector is the derivative vector divided by its magnitude. So 1 fifth divided by the magnitude times 5 sine of t i plus, I'm sorry, it's negative 5 sine of t i plus 5 cosine of t j. Distributing the 1 fifth through, making it a unit tangent vector, it becomes negative sine of t i plus the cosine of t j. The numerator is the derivative of the unit tangent vector. So we'll take this unit tangent vector that we just found, negative sine of ti plus the cosine of tj, and find its derivative which gives us negative cosine of t i minus the sine of t j. Well, the numerator is the magnitude of this vector, the magnitude of the unit tangent vector, which in this case is really nice because it's the square root of the components, which is cosine squared of t plus the sine squared of t. And we know sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And so now we're ready to go to our formula. for curvature in 3D. In 3D, the curvature is the magnitude of the unit tangent vector's derivative divided by the magnitude of the vector valued function's derivative. Well, the tangent derivative's magnitude, we found out, was 1. 
the magnitude of the derivative of the vector we found out was 5. And so we have a curvature of 1 fifth. Turns out in this case that the curvature is constant because this entire shape is a circle. It's a circle of radius 5, and so it curves at a rate of 1 fifth all the way around the entire graph. But that's just a 2D example. Let's take a look at an example in 3D. Let's take the vector valued function r of t is equal to 4 cosine of t, 4 sine of t, and 3t. Now, it's off my screen, so I'm just going to copy again that curvature in 3D is going to be the magnitude of r prime of t crossed with r prime prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t cubed. It's just to remember the formula, which is off my screen. So we just need to start finding these pieces. So let's start with finding r prime of t. r prime of t is negative 4 sine of t comma 4 cosine of t, comma 3. We also need to know r prime prime of t, which is negative 4 cosine of t, negative 4 sine of t, and 0. To make the numerator, we need to cross those two vectors. So r prime of t crossed with r prime prime of t. And when we cross these, we get 0 minus a negative 12, so positive 12 sine of t, comma, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 cosine of t minus 0, comma, 16 sine squared of t minus a negative, so plus 16 cosine squared of t. which if you factor on that g, uh, k component, factor out a 16, we have sine squared plus cosine squared. So that's actually going to simplify just to 16. So let's rewrite this vector simplified with 16 in the k component. The numerator of the curvature is the magnitude of r prime crossed with r prime prime of t. So let's find the magnitude of this vector, which is the square root of 144 sine squared of t plus 144 cosine squared of t plus 16 squared, which is 256. Factoring out the 144, we're left with cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So we're left with 144 plus 256, which is the square root of 400, which is 20. So our numerator for the curvature is 20. The denominator is the magnitude of our prime of t cubed. Well, we found r prime of t already in our first step up above in blue. So let's just run the magnitude formula, which is the square root of the components, 16 sine squared of t plus 16 cosine squared of t plus 9. Again, if you pull the 16 out of the first two terms, you're left with 16 times sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 1, 
plus 9, we get the square root of 25, which is just 5. And so finally, we're ready to calculate the curvature of our vectored valued function. Curvature, we said, using the formula in the top right here, is the numerator is the magnitude of the cross product, we found out was 20, divided by the magnitude of the derivative, which is 5 cubed, which is 20 over 125, which dividing by 5 will give us 4 over 25 as our final curvature. Curvature in three dimensions, measuring how sharply a corner is turning. We had a third formula, though, for curvature, so let's take a look at it. The third formula is used best when we have a function written out like f of x equals x squared. How sharp is this function turning? How is the curvature measured? Well, again, it's off my screen, but you have it on your notes up above that the curvature when we have a function is the absolute value of the second derivative divided by 1 plus the first derivative squared raised to the 3 halves power. So let's find all those pieces. First derivative is 2x. The second derivative is just 2. And so if we plug into our curvature function, we get the absolute value of the second derivative, which is 2, divided by 1 plus the first derivative, which is 2x squared, all raised to the 3 halves power. Cleaning up a little bit, the absolute value of 2 is just 2 over 1 plus 4x squared raised to the 3 halves power. And this time, our curvature is not a constant, but it depends on how big x is. And that makes sense, because we know x squared starts out with a real sharp curve in the center, but on the outsides, it's becoming more and more flat. In fact, let's take a look at what the graphs of x squared looks like compared to the graph of its curvature. So here I've graphed uh, the graph of x squared. And now I'm going to graph its curvature, which we said was 2 over 1 plus 4x squared raised to the 3 halves power. And what we see is the curvature is at its largest value, its steepest point, at 0. But as it gets out further and further and further, the curvature gets less and less and less. And so we see the curvature increases as the curve sharpness increases. And that's what we're measuring with curvature. How sharply, how fast is this smooth curve turning? So we've got three formulas for curvature. One formula that helps in two dimensions, one in three dimensions, and one when we have y as a function of x instead of a vectored valued function. Take a look at the homework assignment, also doing some arc length problems to see if you can get comfortable with them. Come to class with questions, and we will see you then.